looking at what are known as differential equations, okay? Um, so specifically in 5.1, we'll be looking at separation variables, which is the main technique for solving differential equations, and we'll be looking at what specifically isn't differential equation, because that's probably a big question on everybody's minds right now. So intro differential equations. Differential equations are equations that relate the first, second, etc. order derivatives of a function y to the original function. So an example would be like the second derivative of y respect to x minus k times the derivative of y respect to x minus y equals 0. It relates the derivative, or second order derivative in this case, to the derivative to y, okay? We have dy over dx equals 4y over x, and we have dy over dx equals negative k times x. So each of these equations here relates the derivative of y back to either y itself or the variable on which y depends, which is x. Differential equations form the basis for most of modern mathematics and most of applied mathematics because differential equations appear um, in widespread applications in not only physics and engineering, but also computer science and economics, so on and so forth. So differential equations is a very rich field of study in modern mathematics. And the main attack method we have for differential equations is separation of variables. Okay. So a separable differential equation is an equation of the form dy over dx equals g of x divided by h of x, okay? Where g is a function of x and f a function of y, or better said, h is a function of y. The word separable is used as we can separate the equation into an expression dependent on y and one dependent on x. So we can multiply both sides by h of y and both sides by d of x by cross multiplication, and we get hy d of y equals g of x d of x, okay? So to solve a differential equation, the idea is, is we're going to separate the equation by cross multiplication. So you have all y variables on one side and all x variables on the other side. So h of y, d of y equals g of x, d of x. We find the antiderivatives, capital H and capital G of both sides via definite integrals. So we're going to get that um, the definite integral, or excuse me, indefinite integral of h of y, d of y gives us capital H of y. And the indefinite integral of g of x, d of x gives us um, capital G of X plus C, okay? We only need the integration constant on one side here because we could technically have the integration constants on both sides, but we could combine those integration constants into one big integration constant. So it saves us time just to write one integration constant on one side, okay? So with a differential equation, um, you'll oftentimes have initial information since that is going to determine what your function is specifically. So that in initial information is going to be used to solve for your constant of integration to determine what specific function you have. So um, the constant of integration that we've seen all the way going back to unit 4 we can get rid of in differential equations by using initial information to figure out what specifically our function is. So what you're going to do lastly is you'll solve the resulting equation for y. And that will give you your particular solution to the differential equation. Okay, so let's take a look at what um, let's take a look at a problem in practice. What the solution or problem solving um, process looks like in practice. So example one of separation of variables. What is the particular solution to y equals f of x, or why was the particular solution y equals f of x to the differential equation dy over dx equals two over xy? with initial condition of f of 1 equals 2. So again, we're going to cross multiply right here so that we end up with all y variables on the left hand side and all x variables on the right hand side. So it means we're going to cross multiply y and we're going to cross multiply d of x, but we're not going to cross multiply x since we want x on the right hand side. So that's going to leave us with y dy equals 2 dx over x. Okay. So as a result, we're going to have the definite, indefinite integral of y dy equals the indefinite integral of 2 dx over x. So as a result, we're going to get y squared over 2 equals 2 natural logarithm of x plus c. So this is our general solution to the differential equation, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to have for f of 1 equals 2, we're going to solve for our initial condition. So y equals 2, x equals 1, so we're going to have 2 squared divided by 2 equals 2 times natural logarithm of 1 plus c, which is going to give us 2 equals c, okay? So as a result, we're going to get the specific solution, y squared over 2 equals 2 natural logarithm of x plus 2, okay? So as a result, we're going to solve for y now, which gives us y squared equals 4 natural logarithm of x plus 4. We can factor out the 4, 
And thus we can take the square root of both sides, which is going to give us y equals plus or minus 2 square root of natural logarithm of x plus 1. But we have a problem here. This is, y is supposed to be a function. Functions cannot have pluses or minus. Functions have to have either a plus or a minus. So how do we determine if it's a plus or a minus? So to determine the sine solution, we have to take note of our initial y value. We can take note that our initial y value is positive. f of 1 equals 2, so the sine and solution will also be positive. So y is going to equal plus 2 square root of natural logarithm of x plus 1. And that gives us our solution to our differential equation. So now when it comes to verifying a solution to a differential equation, okay, if provided initial conditions, see if the initial uh, see if the solution fits the initial condition. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're taking a solution now, and we're trying to see if that solution um, is correct. Okay, so the same way with um, algebraic equations, where you take say x equals two and you plug it back into equation to solve to see if you get the see if both sides of the equation match up. We're going to do a similar thing, except the first thing that we need to do is see if the initial condition, see if our solution gives us the correct initial condition. So for f of x equals plus 2 square root natural logarithm x plus 1, we have f of 1 equals plus 2 square root natural logarithm plus 1. The natural logarithm of 1 is just 0, so we're going to get the square root of 0 plus 1, which is just going to be 1. So we're going to get that multiplied by 2, which gives us 2. So the initial condition is satisfied. So now the other thing that we can do is we can plug the solution into differential equation to see if the equation is satisfied. Okay? So for this differential equation, we're going to get y equals 2 natural logarithm of x plus 1 to the 1 half power. So we can compute both sides separately. Okay? We take note of the fact that our differential equation is dy over dx equals 2 over xy. So we're first going to compute dy over dx, then we'll compute 2 over xy, and we'll compare two to see if we get the same result. So for dy over dx, we're going to use the chain rule, okay, with u equals um, natural logarithm of x plus 1, okay? So that's going to give us, as a result, 2 times 1 half natural logarithm of x plus 1 to negative 1 half times the derivative of natural logarithm of x plus 1, which is going to be just 1 over x. So as a result, the 2s are going to cancel out, and we're going to get... Um, 1 over x times the square root of natural logarithm of x plus 1. We bring the negative 1 half. That tells us we're going to have a square root on the negative. Um, that means we're going to have a square root on the natural logarithm of x plus 1 in the denominator. Okay? So now we compute 2 over xy. Okay? So we're going to have 2 over x times 2 square root of natural logarithm of x plus 1. Okay? So the 2s are going to cancel out, and that's going to leave us with 1 over the square root of x square natural logarithm of x plus 1. So we see we get the same thing on both sides telling us this is the correct solution to our differential equation.